Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Poetry in Motion by Alan Bennett. If you can hear a noise, it is my fan next to me. It's very hot in here, and I'm not going to take off all my clothes, fortunately for you. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... In Poetry in Motion, Alan Bennett looks in his own distinctive way at the lives and poetry of Thomas Hardy, A. E. Hausman, John Betjeman, W. H. Auden, Lewis McNeese and Philip Larkin. He includes selected poems by these writers and there are also biographical details, reading lists of work by and about the poets and sources of further information. So it's really cool, it's kind of like a cross between a poetry collection and little mini bios of each of these poets. It's also an interesting little layout. Um, I think this was actually a companion book to a BBC, you know, Channel 4 television series. So uh, yeah, this is from the introduction anyway. We'll go straight on him. So this is a quote from the politician Arthur Balfour, which reminded me, me of my friend Dave. Uh, I am more or less happy when being praised, not very uncomfortable when being abused, but I have moments of uneasiness when being explained. So we're gonna take a look at Thomas Hardy, and I thought this was some fascinating uh, information here. The second Mrs. Hardy might have known what was coming from the manner of Hardy's proposal. He had taken her to the churchyard to show her the grave of wife number one, and pointing to another vacant plot, he said, that's for you. By this, she took it that he was proposing. Before there anything else, if they're any good at all, most writers are absurd. Very true. And I've heard this fact before as well. Well, I don't know if it's a fact, it's more like a saying. Um, so it says, it is always said that in London you settle near the station you arrive at, and when Hardy came to London to work as an architect, he lived in Bayswater and was married at St Peter's, Paddington. That would mean I would live near Euston, I suppose. And I, I just think this is great as well. Um, now a happier poem, though like so many of Hardy's, it, it ends with a grave. It's a poem to his cat. Samuel Butler said that the true test of the imagination is the ability to name a cat, but T.S. Eliot said that cats have several names, including the name they're given and the name that they eventually require. The name that Hardy's cat eventually acquired was Kiddly Winkum Poop's Trot. So I'm going to start calling Biggie. I mean, he's got like Biggs, Mr. Biggles, Biggie Boy. Alright, on to A.E. Hausman, who I'd never really read before. Um, there are poems from these poets as well, and I have tabbed one or two of them out. So this is about ha Hausman. It says, He liked tempting fate and often ran up the several flights of stairs to his room in the hope that he might have a heart attack when he got to the top. Hmm, interesting. Some more great quotes here. So, by the time you have perfected a style of writing, said George Orwell, you have always outgrown it. You spend 25 years learning to be yourself, said Auden, and then you find you must now start learning not to be yourself. So we're going to move on to Louis McNeese. Louis McNeese? I don't actually know how to pronounce that. So it says, McNeese died quite young in 1963, having caught pneumonia down a pothole in Yorkshire while recording authentic sound effects for one of his BBC programmes. That's dedication to his art. That. Um, and I want to read his poem here, To Posterity. When books have all seized up like the books in the graveyards, and reading and even speaking have been replaced by other, less difficult media, we wonder if you will find in flowers and fruit the same colour and taste they held for us for whom they were framed in words. And will your grass be green, your sky be blue, or will your birds be always wingless birds? And now, uh, moving on to Larkin, I like this line. It says, Larkin is famous for his fear of death. He's also famous for his fear of life. There's a great quote here, he says, uh, it's a good job childhood is at the beginning of our lives. We'd never survive if it were in the middle. Um, but he's also got three O's in the word good for some reason. I enjoyed this bit here as well. So it's talking about Betjeman, it goes, Betjeman always had an eye for the forlorn and the unloved. Unloved buildings, unloved suburbs, aesthetic outcasts as well as emotional ones. Lord David Cecil was once giving a lecture on the pleasures of reading when, rather to his surprise, he saw Betjeman in the audience. Afterwards, he thanked him for coming. Oh no, don't thank me, said Betjeman. I thought it was the pleasures of Reading. It says, Betjeman, unlike many of his contemporaries, wasn't homosexual, but he did make a tentative stab at conforming in this regard. Indeed, on one occasion, he said to Hugh Gateskill, do you mind if I put my hand on your bottom? The future leader of the Labour Party sighed and said, well, if you must. So continuing with Philip Larkin, um, we have This Be The Verse, which is one of his famous ones. I really enjoy it. Um, they fuck you up, your mum and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults they had and add some extra just for you. But they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old style hats and coats, who half the time were soppy stern and half at one another's throats. Man hands on misery to man, it deepens like a coastal shelf. Get out as early as you can and don't have any kids yourself. And um, 
Bennett elaborates on that here. He says, even if Larkin hadn't got on with his parents, I still think he was going to complain about it. If your parents do fuck you up and you're going to write, that's fine because then you've got something to write about. But if they don't fuck you up, then you've got nothing to write about. So then they fucked you up good and proper. Hmm, deep. So yeah, all in all, Poetry in Motion by Alan Bennett. I thought it was a really cool little book. Um, I liked the way that it introduced me to a lot. I mean, a lot of these I'd heard of. I hadn't ever read any Lewis McNeese, though, or, or any Hausman, actually. I'd read the other poets. But I really enjoyed the way that it mixes their poetry with um, like the biographical notes on their life. And it's written in Bennett's distinctive voice as well, which makes it you know even more fun. So overall, Poetry in Motion by Alan Bennett. I gave this probably a weak one, but a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of Poetry in Motion by Alan Bennett. As always, don't forget to let me know what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.